The American Roosevelts can trace their origins to Klaus Martensen von Rosenfeld, emigrating with his family from the Dutch province of Zeeland to the New World in 1647. Klaus had two grandsons, Johannes and Jacobus, who created the two lines that have since dominated the Roosevelt story, the Oyster Bay line, which includes Theodore and Eleanor, and the Hyde Park line, which includes Franklin. The marriage of Eleanor and Franklin in 1905 linked the two wings of the family. But let's begin with Theodore. He was born on October the 27th, 1858 in Manhattan. At the age of 18, he entered Harvard, where he distinguished himself in both scholarship and sports. While at Harvard, he also began working on the Naval War of 1812, the first of his more than 30 books, which is still considered a classic of American history. T.R. was a devoted father of six children, and in his own words, he thought that his family made all other forms of success and achievement lose their importance. T.R. also loved the wilderness, and after the tragedy of losing his mother and his first wife on the same day, he retreated to recuperate in the badlands of North Dakota. This was a very formative period of his life, when he learned to overcome loss and become self-sufficient. But at the same time, he was driven by a passion for politics, so he decided to go back to build a career in public office. Theodore served three terms as a Republican in the New York State Assembly, before becoming Civil Service Commissioner and then Police Commissioner of New York City. In 1897, he moved into national politics, where he was appointed Assistant Secretary of the Navy under President William McKinley. This was a major turning point in his rise to power, during the Spanish-American War of 1898, he personally led a group of cavalry, known as the Rough Riders, to the battlefront in Cuba, demonstrating courage and leadership and becoming a popular national hero. Within a couple of years, he was elected governor of New York State, nominated as vice president, and finally, following McKinley's assassination in 1901, becoming president himself. T.R. almost immediately set his own course, becoming perhaps the most active and outspoken president in American history. He confidently pushed a reformist agenda, believing that government intervention could help US capitalism overcome many of its structural problems. As he put it in 1903, great corporations exist only because they are created and safeguarded by our institutions and it is therefore our right and our duty to see that they work in harmony with these institutions. He was also a fervent nationalist and an American exceptionalist who claimed a new and more prominent role for his country in world affairs. Stepping down from the presidency in 1908, he would run again in 1912 as leader of the Progressive Party, along the way surviving an assassination attempt and fixing his image as Bull Moose forever. Although Theodore received the largest third-party vote in American history, it was the Democrat Woodrow Wilson who was elected as president. Disappointed by this defeat, T.R. left the United States for a new expedition into the wilderness, this time exploring one of the last uncharted rivers in South America, now named the Rio Teodoro. During his presidency, Theodore had emphasized negotiations and diplomacy an effort that won him the Nobel Peace Prize for mediating an end to the Russo-Japanese War of 1905. But once World War I broke out, TR argued fiercely for American intervention. He did live to see the US enter and win that war. However, shocked by the loss of his son Quentin, a pilot shot down in France in 1918, and weakened by malaria, Theodore Roosevelt died on January 6, 1919. However, his exemplary energies, passions and reforming spirit would live on.